Generation. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today at the official panel for uh, High School Musical, the musical the series here at the Outfronts presented by MDB. <laughs> I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> we have a stacked lineup of panelists today that includes uh, executive producer Tim Federley, uh, series writer Ilana Walpert, and actors uh, Frankie Rodriguez, Joe Serafini, Julia Lester, Larry Saperstein, and uh, Sailor Bell Curta. And I'm so excited because uh, the series is so cute and so gay. It makes me want to relive all my uh, old young adult choir theater days. So it's cool to be doing this with you all today. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, just to kick things off and uh, break the ice a little bit, I want to start by asking the entire room, um, what the earliest memory of High School Musical, what well, the High School Musical franchise was, and how you came across it, and uh, if you had to be roommates or go on a road trip with an original character from the original movie series, who would it be and why? <laughs> um, whoever wants to start, let's go with uh, Tim. Oh, <laughs> gosh. <the> boss man. <laughs> My earliest memory is I was actually on tour with a show called Spamalot. I was dancing on a Monty Python show, and we were in Chicago, and there were posters up all over Chicago saying there's this new movie on the Disney Channel, which I was like amazed by because I had never seen posters for a Disney Channel movie. So that was my that was my original memory. And then who would I most want to go? I'd most want to go on a road trip with Kenny Ortega, who's not a character from the movies. But I, I have like so many questions about Hocus Pocus and Newsies and, of course, the High School Musical franchise. Um, those are my answers. It'll be a fun road trip. <laughs> fun, yeah. Um, I miss Alana. Um, so I was like, this is, uh, I remember literally the exact day that High School Musical came out. It was January 13th, 2006, because they kept advertising it on the Disney channel. And I was like, this is what I'm here for. Like, this is why I'm at my DVD. <laughs> and I, me and my friends watched it every single day after school. And the movie we were like obsessed with before that was Rent. And so our our parents were just like, okay, great. Like this one's on Disney. Like this is good. <laughs> um, and we were just so obsessed with it. And then my cousin who, who I'm with right now just reminded me, she had a five-year-old like high school musical themed birthday party where there were stations of like basketball and like karaoke machine and like cheerleading and like math quizzes. And it was like a very elaborate setup. So the year 2006 was very big high school musical for me. Uh, so lots of lots of memories. And then if I was going to go on a road trip with someone, road trip and roommate, I think I would say Sharpay because she's like always just going to keep things interesting. She's going to find like all the nicest restaurants. Oh, she's going to pay for it probably. So, like, <laughs> I'm going with her. <laughs> um, 2006 was also the year Hannah Montana premiered. So iconic year all around. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for me too. <laughs> Um, I'm just going by the order of my screen. So, uh, Joe, uh, you next. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I also had a high school musical themed birthday party <gasps> that year. Um, it wasn't as elaborate as yours, but <laughs> I, I do remember seeing like the poster on the cake. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I remember like first seeing it in like a magazine that was just like laying around the house, this big, like the high school musical iconic poster. And of course I tuned in with my whole family and ever since then, it's just been such a huge part of my life now. Um, and I would probably travel with, I'm gonna say Kelsey, mm. because we could play the piano together. We can bring it <laughs> I also feel like she's comfortable with quiet sometimes, <laughs> which can be nice on a road trip. <laughs> totally. Have some peace. <laughs> Frankie. My cousins who were big on sports, uh, I remember I like went over to their house one day and they were like, you have to watch this movie. It's a musical called High School Musical. You're gonna love it. I was like, well, if they're loving it. So I think it's like right up my alley. So that's like my first memory of it. And if I had to pick a road trip partner, my heart obviously wants to say Troy Bolton, but I do think I would have a better time with Sharpay. So sorry. <laughs> sorry, Troy. <laughs> uh, Miss Julia. 
Oh, okay. So I grew up with two older sisters and all three of us obsessed with theater, of course. So Mm -hmm. High School Musical was like a no brainer. Like Alana said, when the commercials were playing on Disney Channel, I was like, we have to watch this movie. So I vividly remember sitting in our little family room, big sis got the couch and then us two little ones sat on the carpet like this in front of the TV and watched it. And it was life-changing and then from there on out it was everywhere like you look left and right and high school musical was plastered on buildings and over every single tv channel that we watched and it was just i mean there was no escaping it you know it it took over the world and it's the best and a euro trip or roommate buddy oh yeah i mean i'm gonna have to follow the crowd i would road trip with sharpay like i don't know i think we would that pink car and uh, <laughs> I feel like she would take really good care of the people that she was road tripping with. So, yeah. <laughs> Lunch on her. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All the perks, all the perks. Uh, Sailor. Yeah. Um, I pretty much, I grew up with three older sisters and it was just like, it was already such a huge thing when I was growing up and my older sister also had a High School Musical themed birthday party um, for like when she was 10, turning 10 or something like that, I think. Um, Literally the day that High School Musical 2 came out is when she had her party (laughs) because it's the day after her birthday. But um, I just grew up with it. like all around me and us watching it like religiously. So I don't even remember all of the like posters and magazines and it even being a big thing just cause it was a big thing for me already. Um, so it was pretty much, it's been there ever since like my first memories cause it was my older sister's favorite thing in the entire world. It was, it was really funny growing up, but um, and then road tripping listen i think i i want to pick ryan because i feel like he's like sharpay but a little bit nicer (laughs) and and like i just think it'd be really fun to go on a road trip with him and like sing to the songs in the car and harmonize (laughs) i think it'd be a blast all the benefits of sharpay but not shady so that's good that's what that's where i was at (laughs) And uh, last but not least, our own big red, uh, Larry Sepperstein. <laughs> uh, okay, so I don't know if I remember my very first time watching High School Musical, but I do remember uh, that Disney Channel used to do these events where they would uh, play the movies, and then in the commercial breaks, they would teach you dance numbers from the movies. Uh, so I do remember learning We're All in This Together from the cast of High School Musical uh, while watching High School Musical. And then when High School Musical 2 came out, I had my mom uh, record it on VHS because we were gonna be at like a school concert or something while it was while it was coming out. And so I was like, I can't miss this. I love this so much. Can you please record it on VHS? So, uh, so that's how I watched High School Musical 2. Um, and then yeah, for the road trip, I think I think a year ago I might have said Ryan because I would have wanted uh, show tunes the whole way. But I think now uh, I would say Taylor because I think she would have a great playlist. I'll just get a band, <laughs> get all these characters together, and all hop in and just take one big road trip. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for that. Um, I guess just to get in the nitty gritty of things. Um, uh, my first question is for uh, Tim and Alana. As two of the creatives behind the series, how do you feel in this current moment gearing up for the release of the thir- third season? Congrats, by the way. <laughs> and uh, how does it feel knowing the kind of impact the series has had with LGBTQ fans so far? Ah, oh, man, it's, I mean, it's so powerful. And I feel like, um, you know, theater has always attracted queer people, both as audience members, as creators, as writers, as actors. And so I think the show has always been a tribute to the the spirit of real theater people, which naturally includes um, a big a big segment of, of queer people. And then, uh, yeah, hearing from the audience, seeing their response, um, hearing from young people who say, you know, I saw myself in in Seb and Carlos for the first time. I saw myself represented in a way that wasn't tragic. It's it's really powerful. And we couldn't do it without queer writers and queer directors. And of course, these these actors who 
um, identify on the spectrum, but bring these these characters to life. Alana? <laughs> Yeah, I would say I think I have so many I have so many like queer friends who are just like it's so nice that like it's not it's not tragic, it's not trauma, it's all just so fun and lovely and feels so representative of like the experience I'm having as like being queer and in being happy with myself and coming into my own and um yeah, I mean, I think, I feel like season three, um, it only gets queer, which is really exciting. <laughs> and um, I don't know if that's a spoiler. I'm so terrified of spoiling anything. But, <laughs> um, but I'm just really excited. I feel like there's so many, there's so many stories to tell. And there's so many people who are looking for themselves in this show. And it feels really beautiful to, to get to bring that to a community that uh, seems to be continually finding the show. Was it kind of daunting, especially since um, from season one, you were adapting from an already beloved like media franchise instead of just its own original thing. So, especially knowing how much queer fans like uh, have taken to it, or well, how was it na- like navigating that? I think it was less daunting and more uh, the 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 feeling of a real opportunity. Um, you know, like when Frankie came in to audition for Carlos. Um, I think there was some commonality between Frankie and that character. And, and, and I felt like you could just look at Frankie's Instagram at the time. And I was like, man, he, this guy lives his life. So with such like carbonated enthusiasm and joy and lack of apology. And, and that was something I wanted to bring to the screen. And uh, it wasn't daunting. It maybe it should have been, but I think it's because my generation grew up with, like Footloose and Grease and and things that had no queer representation. So approaching High School Musical with fresh eyes also meant that I think I wasn't as burdened by that. How about you, Alana, as a writer? Um, well, I I wasn't there for season one. That was that was all Tim. But I think I mean the types of representation that I had growing up, which is you know part of the reason it took me so long to come out, is like I had the like three seasons, the three episode arc of like Marissa Cooper um, dating Olivia Wilde's character in the OC, and that's mm-hmm. like it. That is like what we got for bisexual representation, and, <laughs> and to close the book. So, and then you know there was there was Glee later on, but by then it so felt like the door was closed, and so it's so exciting to to get to revisit something like High School Musical that was so important to me when I was a teenager and to, to sort of like heal my childhood self by like re re seeing it with all of these queer characters and all of this joy. Um, it just feels really special to get to be part of it. Love that. <laughs> um, for Frankie and Joe, Seblos is so beloved and uh, you two had like a great second season and a history making second season. I scream at the top of my lungs. You keep it all bottled up, but different that way. Different that but way. please don't ever change. Don't ever change. The vibes feel like it's only us. Looking for a kind of love, and maybe that's true. But I'm so glad that it's you. I wish you knew that you're fantastic. I'll be right here, whatever happens. When all said and done.
would just like to play a, a couple who the fans have given a ship name to. Is that a lot of fun? And again, is there still a lot of pressure to get it right, especially since uh, queer representation is still so hard to come by nowadays, even though it's getting better? I feel like anything, we kind of have the easy job in this part. We like all the work is done and we just say the lines on the page. <laughs> um, but it's it's really special, especially when you're getting those messages like that or from kids who are like, I'm identifying with these characters um, or like your character gave me the confidence to come out to my family. It's like those, you really don't see that impact when you're filming it. It's when it's done and you're like, wow, my gosh, like I'm so happy this is resonating with people the way it is. That's uh, obviously really special. And it, it's, on, I almost feel like the characters have inspired me in a way to live in a more like outward, like celebratory way about my identity and how I identify. Um, so that's been really sweet too. Um, in terms of like pressure, I don't really feel too much pressure from it. Honestly, the support and like the way that people have resonated with these characters has mostly been like just so positive and so sweet. Um, so it's been really nice to have those people find us and us find them. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, for Julia and Larry, how do your off-screen identities inform what you bring to these characters? And what's different about playing like, you know, a modern high school compared to when you were yourself recently just in high school? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I love that. Go ahead, Larry, sorry. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, Phil, first of all, you know, Julia and I, as people and as actors, are both people that live somewhere on this spectrum. Um, and I think that our characters live somewhere in that world as well. Um, and I think beyond just like sexuality, I think there's like a sensitivity that comes with being a queer person. Uh, and I think there's a, a sensitivity that we bring to our characters and our relationship um, that is deeper than than just you know boy girl boy boy like like any of those kinds of surface level things um and so i think that being queer people were able to bring that dimension and and uh having my scene partner and my relationship partner uh for three plus years at this point be someone who identifies similarly to the way that i identify uh just has made me feel uh, very like seen in that relationship and seen in that process. And so, yeah, having having Julia be my TV girlfriend has been the best thing in the world. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Ditto. Um, I, I love a scene with Larry. Um, it's been it's been so much fun. But I think that something that has been so beautiful in this series has been the attention and almost respect that has been given towards the fact that these are high schoolers that are either changing over long periods of time or changing on a day-to-day -day basis or an hourly basis. And I feel like that's something that we all experienced within the process of filming this. So much happened over the last three years of our lives and so much growth has happened regardless of how long it's taken. I think that's something that has really been reflected into the series as well, which is something that rings true for when we were all high schoolers and the high schoolers now. Um, and yeah, I think that's really amazing. And season three is such a beautiful representation of sort of that whole idea. Um, there's lots of change and growth for everybody. And it's, um, yeah, it's been very cool to watch and sort of learn um, as the process went along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be fun for the fans to finally get to see y'all return too, because they've been they've been itching for y'all to come back for season three. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of season three, Sailor, you're the one of the new kids on the block. How's it feel to be doing such a beloved show where diversity and LGBTQ inclusion is at its core and at its heart? I I honestly just could not be more oh, honored to just be able to be a part of like such an impactful show where not even off screen and on like i'm surrounded by these beautifully open like queer people and characters who like on screen and in person i look up to like who i just admire and i also just 
I can imagine that that is the same with so many other people who are watching. And just the fact that I can feel that as well as all those others, I just can't believe that I get to be a part of something like that where people can admire the same way that I do. Um, and like, I get to be one of those people who is like with all the rest of you and, I just couldn't be more honored and more proud to be able to say that I'm a part of this show and a part of this inclusion. <laughs> I'm sure fans will get love to give me your character too. <laughs> um, back to Tim and Alana. I mean, all of the show's great inclusion and representation wouldn't matter if the storytelling wasn't good or authentic. So can you talk about creating a world where teens of so many backgrounds can come together and be themselves and share their love of music and the theater? Uh, I mean, I think a lot of it starts with um, who you surround yourself with. So I know, you know, the stories start in the writer's room and, and we wanted the writer's room to reflect both the real world and also the, the actors for whom we're writing. Um, and, and it also means, you know, I'm not in high school anymore and I'm nowhere near it. So hiring, frankly, younger writers and having young voices in the room and really even paying attention to like the cadence of how these folks talk in real life. And I think what moves them not really to look to their lives for storylines, but more sort of points of view. Um, I've been very struck by just how frankly queer Gen Z, uh, uh, identifies as and and it's it's so different from the binary world I lived in which was like will and grace that was it that was those were like the two things you could be so um yeah I think it starts with the room and and then and then it reflects back and the actors you know inspire us as well Lonnie yeah I mean I would agree I think like it definitely starts in the room. And for me, like one of the writers on the show is like the first person I came out to. And she like has been sort of my queer spirit guide. And it's that sort of thing is so special. And like, I'm so glad that I would, I, you know, was able to find that person and find community because of the show. And I think that has sort of informed too, like the way that I'm, I'm looking at the show and writing for the characters is like, I sort of, I, I got community from the writer's room and, and beyond. And I think too, like, you know, all of, all of the actors are such wonderful people and are just such a joy to talk to and watch. And I think, I think a lot of the stories are informed by, by, yeah, like things that we're, we're seeing Gen Z go through and the things that, um, you know, we pick up on them. Yeah. It's great. I was about to say like, what I like most about the series is like, when their t- characters are talking to each other, it feels like they're actual like young characters talking to each other, not like some older writer is so super stuffy looking down at them, being condescending. And I like that it's real and authentic. I was wondering if you could speak as a writer, how you would channel that and like how you, your approach to that, making them sound like you know actual Gen Z, actual teens who are having conversations with each other. I mean, I feel like we we try to avoid lingo because the second. Um, somebody's saying like your eyebrows look on fleek. Um, <laughs> I'm canceled. Uh, it's more about just like the basic, the primary drives that never change that are like mm-hmm. historical drives back to Romeo and Juliet, acceptance, community, competition, love, family, uh, dreams, aspirations, uh, humiliation, like all the primary emotions that drive us. Um, uh, and it starts with us and we sort of have notions or we'll be in the writer's room and we'll say like, Hey, Zach, you went to summer camp, any funny stories or Alana, I'm, you know, you, you so brave to share this sort of budding part of your identity. Is there anything about that that you might be able to bring to a story? And then it gets filtered and sort of through the, you know, once these young actors say the words, they just bring such instant authenticity to it that we in a way we don't we don't try that hard to sound young um i don't know if we succeed but what we try to just be is honest more than anything else yeah the, the authenticity is great it's, i hate when a show sounds like a twitter feed so at least it's not that <laughs> I, I, would, I would love to say too that uh, also throughout this whole process there have been multiple times where uh, we've had conversations with Tim where he said, if anything feels inauthentic to you and if anything feels like it doesn't 
uh, communicate who you are uh, in an authentic way, like, please tell me about it and we'll talk about it. And so I feel like there's always this kind of open door uh, to bring that authenticity to the show. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that makes the show what it is. Mm -hmm. We also hired real <laughs> theater kids, like largely, you know, Sailor sang a song from Hades Town. Wait, is it Hades? Is that what it's called? Hades Town. Right? <laughs> yeah, Hades Town. <laughs> so old, I'm like still listening to Evita. <laughs> uh, but like, you know, we, we hired like real theater kids. So there's something so real that Julia, who just did Into the Woods off Broadway and Larry, who grew up doing theater and Joe and I grew up in the same theater troupe in Pittsburgh. And Frankie was the first kid at his school who ever staged Footloose because he went to the drama teacher and said, we should do Footloose. And so it's like they're they're like the real thing. You know, Alana, you know, if she weren't in L.A. doing this, she'd be like in New York City writing plays so i think we're I think, or something else i don't want to typecast you you're like hey, I, <laughs> I, fair. I, I would do that you're like i, I want would, to be I would, six yeah i would be the um the music teacher on tiktok who is like slowly revealing julia showed this to me like slowly revealing <laughs> oh yeah what her um spring musical is gonna be and it's like day 26 <laughs> and she still hasn't revealed it <laughs> that is what i would do <laughs> <laughs> absolutely oh my god I'm theater kids. <laughs> okay, um, my mind keeps going back to Seblo, so I have to ask Frank your question about that. <laughs> um, in season two, uh, in a heartbeat, made history repeat uh, for being Disney's first ever same-sex love song. And I think the scene where um, Carlos sings the song to Seb was so romantic and obviously instantly iconic. <laughs> now that some time has passed since that episode aired, can you like reflect on that a little bit? And did you ever think in your career you'd ever be doing something as Momentous as that, especially for one of the biggest media companies in the world and one of the most beloved franchises in the world. Oh my gosh, no. Um, I <laughs> grew up obviously obsessed with Disney and all of like the Disney, I wanted to be a Disney princess. So of course I was in like Same. a whole new world and like, you know, like Tangled and all, all these like romantic love ballads. Um, so to get to be able to do that myself um, when it's like my voice and like, so like a story that is, you know, obviously very personal. So it was, it's very sweet. And it came up on uh, my shuffle the other day and I was just like oh my god we did this it was just it's like I just look back at like the sweetest memories and uh Tim can you talk about like overseeing and crafting that arc especially since <laughs> sure. it was I mean, such I like, also, romantic and iconic and yeah but I'll also some say, like for Joe Serafini with this crazy yeah. voice that Joe was born yeah. with and so hearing Joe sing a song like The Climb which is so iconically associated with Miley Cyrus um, who then retweeted it. So, <laughs> like that's also so moving because it's not, it's not only creating new songs for these beautiful new voices to sing, but it's looking back and saying like, we've been through the climb too. <laughs> like, you know, so many of our dreams actually overlap. And I think the queer community is so idiosyncratic and special and iconic and specific and other, and also in many ways, we all want the same things and we all have big dreams. So Joe, what was it like when you got the call that you were gonna sing The Climb? Oh my gosh, I was like, I, I honestly couldn't even process it. I was just like, oh, an iconic song, obviously, like <laughs> everyone knows The Climb. Um, and I was just so excited to like bring it new life and, and bring it into like this queer storyline. I thought that was such a like, creative way to bring back that song and mm -hmm. make it make sense for these characters. So it was awesome. I hope Miley saw it. I think you said you retweeted it. She retweeted it. So. I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> I, tell, I, I tell myself she did. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for you, Tim, also, um, I also think it's worth mentioning that the series has so many out LGBTQ cast members. I think it's one of the biggest LGBTQ casts in TV right now. So you talk about the impact that has, especially in such a homophobic world and a homophobic industry and creating a, a safe a safe space and a work environment where people can be their most real, authentic selves. Yes. I mean, I grew up in the theater, so I, I sort of had gay heroes when I was a kid and so many people don't have that. So I could go to play practice and see older people living these happy, robust lives. And I felt like that I there's a path for me and so many young people by the way, of all identity, don't have that. Um, at High School Musical, I really strive to have an environment where people feel celebrated, feel safe coming to work. And that is um, 
that includes the hiring of queer directors and writers and um, and and with these young actors um, telling stories I think they can be proud to tell that are both age appropriate and also aspirational. Um, but like, there's no agenda behind the show, right? It's just, it's mm -hmm. for me, it was just always sort of like the truth. You know, I've been surrounded by mostly very happy and proud queer people since I was 12 when I did a production of Oliver. And, and I've sort of never looked back and, and it's a little bit of a utopia, but in a world that where Heartstopper is getting picked up for two back-to-back -back seasons right away, which is so spectacular for those amazing people. I think there's such a hunger and a demand from an audience to see themselves represented. So we're happy to be a small part of that tradition. Yes, yeah, more queer TV series. <laughs> I love Heartstopper. Have you all seen Heartstopper? Yes. Yeah. I have so all good. The books. <laughs> so I good. I read all the books like the next day. I was dying. <laughs> oh my gosh. I read all four of them in like three days. It's so good. And then I watched all, the entirety of the show like on one plane ride. <laughs> <laughs> that was so Great. good. Great. Hey, High School Musical Heartstopper collaboration. When? <laughs> that, that'll be really cool. Netflix and Disney Plus. They'll team right up. <laughs> <laughs> Their business uh, affairs will just they'll get to it. They'll get that's, easy. That. That, that's easy. Yeah. Um, for all the actors in the room, I'm curious to know your perspective on that. Like, um, what's it like going to work knowing that there's queer people in front of the camera, but also behind the camera, calling the shots, making decisions, and making uh, the environment like a cool, accepting place. You know, five actors in the room. Everyone start. <laughs> I think it has the biggest impact on performance because when you're going to work and you just feel so comfortable and supported, you're able to just focus on like when the cameras go up, what you're doing there. And I think it hasn't always been like that for me. So for me, it's just very comforting to know that I can go and make mistakes or um, just try things, and it's going to be embraced. I think, yeah, I think there's so much trust. Like, I think, uh, you know, I trust that um, my experience is being, you know, displayed in the story and in the show uh, in a way that I would want it to be uh, talked about and displayed because I trust that Tim and Alana and, you know, there's so many other queer people in the in the crew too, Zach Woodley, people that I look up to and just respect so much. And I, I trust that they, are seeing, you know, themselves through me and, and that younger kids are seeing themselves through all of us. And, and I feel like I, I know that there's authenticity there. And so I don't really have to worry about how I'm being portrayed on screen because I trust that it's going to be authentic and, and real. Yeah, I would say just the way, like I said, how I, I feel like I've learned from the characters and they've sort of inspired me to be more myself, I'm sure half of that also just comes from the environment in which we've created these characters. It, it's just been such a open and safe space where we're all really being celebrated. And I, I feel like I've really been able to step into my, into my self in doing the show and being around this community of people. It's, it's really special. It's kind of crazy. There is like a sense of security with that. Just knowing that like, everyone around you is so loving and accept accepting of, like who you are and and who you're playing and what you're portraying and i just think that, like it really is like i have no fear in in being exactly what i want to be when i'm um just like trying to show who my character is and who i am through my character and i have never once like faltered in that. I just feel so secure around these people who show like nonstop support, especially through writing and everything. I just like, I feel like these people, they all understand. They all know exactly what we're trying to do. And I just feel so secure with all of that around me. <laughs> I mean, it was it was sort of like what Tim said, like I I 
I agree. I feel my most authentic self when I'm around queer people in like rehearsal for community theater. Like that has been my home, my safe space for as long as I can remember. And that is basically what this show is. I mean, Tim really, he hires the people that he wants to work with. And it is such a beautiful family where we can there's, I mean, trust has been like a word that is rings so true for all of us. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've also sort of like spent these last few years, these last few years for a lot of us or most of us have been extremely, um, what's the word? Um, really important years of our lives where a lot of change happens and a lot of mental growth and emotional growth. And so the fact that we can be in this nurturing environment that like allows room for that. And also we're making a kick-ass TV show. Like it's the coolest thing ever. So, um, yeah. (laughs) I'm also thinking to to something Larry said about like trusting us behind this camera, which is so kind of you, but I'm realizing like, we spend so much time with the footage editing these performances, which I sometimes wish you guys could see because we, they, we will sometimes just watch take after take after take and be like, grab that breath there and cut to that. And even though sailor was actually looking at something else, we can use that as a different reaction. You craft these, you craft these um, emotional performances, but ultimately I realize like we never make queerness a joke. Like there can be like a fabulousness and a funniness and a point of view. And like, I, I watch Drag Race 2 and I like geek out on, on, on her story. But at the end of the day, like you're, you're never going to be made a joke. And I feel like I grew up with gay people either not in the story or as punchlines. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, like Larry, I'm realizing like my, even the editors who work on the show, whether they're queer or not, they know to never show me a version of a scene that would make a queer person into a joke, which is probably not, I was just watching a movie from like 15 years ago where one of the jokes was this guy like opening a door and there was a guy on the other side of the door who like winked at him. And that was like the punchline of the whole scene. Like, oh, I just showed up to a date. Didn't think it would be a guy. And I was like, oh, wow, we would not do that joke now. And that was only 15 mm. years ago. So, um, yeah, that's just something I have never thought of before, which is we, we you're never going to be a joke. Come to High School Musical. You'll never be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is too is that like um like queerness is taken seriously but it's also not the only story like it's all I think very intersectional the types of stories that we're telling and it's um it's it's seen as like part of someone's identity but does not have to be their full identity and it's taken like it's it's shown as something that's important but it's not your entire thing which feels so great as just like a queer person working on the show is like you you can be so many different things and it doesn't being queer does not have to look any certain way no matter who you are which is just like wonderful and refreshing and you know I wish I wish I had this show when I was a teenager I mean I'm I'm still a teenager but like when I was a younger teenager <laughs> we always joke that Alana's our teen writer grew <laughs> <laughs> very more undercover yeah. um, I'm in my 20s, but I'm a teen. <laughs> Did you just make a Never Been Kissed reference? Because Never Been Kissed is one of my favorite movies. I didn't not. Yes. I didn't <laughs> not do that. That's funny. <laughs> Another question for um, all the actors. Now that uh, season three is coming up in the near future, the official release date is uh, July 27th on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> what kind you of... Uh, every Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> What kind of challenges uh, as actors are you guys looking forward to in the show or in your career? And how cool is it to keep playing and growing up with these characters? Like Julia mentioned, like this is a really formative time of your life and you're kind of growing up at the same time as these characters. So what's that like? And what are you looking forward to? (laughs) I like the what challenges as actors. That's really interesting. Like what even in your careers, like dream roles or things that you want to take on. That's really interesting. Alana? (laughs) (laughs) As an actor. <laughs> Sailor, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, it's so funny because whenever I think of like dream roles, like if some random person just came up to me and was like, what's your dream role? My brain goes immediately to like, 
in on Broadway, like in musicals, you know, um, and there's too many to count, but, um, <laughs> but I am just like, I already feel like I've grown so much just being a part of just this, season. like, um, and I just, whether it is a show or apart from it, if we continue and if, you know, I'm going to be there, then I just like, I can't imagine myself not learning more about myself and about, um, and about just like this beautiful community. And I just think that there's no way that I could be a part of this show without already just initially growing as an actor. And um, I'm just so, so happy that I had the opportunity this season to already like grow into who my character is and help me learn who I am too as a person. Um, and I'm just, I'm just really excited um, for everyone to see that throughout the season. And I think that um, I'm just so thankful to all of you and just everyone, because you are all such a huge part of my growth. Um, and I'm so thankful for that. Oh, <laughs> oh. Taylor. <laughs> Frank, um, these specific roles. Specific roles. I would love to be Audrey in Little Shop. Um, not the plants, but Audrey. Um, <laughs> so, just hoping for that offer. But um, I've never played a character for this long. And so it's, I, that part of it is really exciting. And I remember at the start of season three, I was a little nervous going into it because there had been such a long break between filming. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like what if I don't remember who he is? And then I got there and it was just wow. so comforting to be around everybody else. And I was like, oh, that's like, it's the pressure is not all on me. Like everybody else informs who this person is and brings him out. And so that part is, I think just really just like special because then it feels like it's really collaborative and you're really getting to work with all of these like amazing people. Um, but yeah, and in terms of like growth, I think one of the best things about our cast is just how diverse it is and how everyone's coming from different kind of parts of the world. And so you're constantly getting new perspectives and learning things. And so that's what I appreciate about this. I think it's such an incredible opportunity that this early on in our career, we've been able to experience sort of what a beautiful envir working environment should be. And so, you know, from here on out, I know that these are the kinds of people that I want to surround myself with and the joy that we experience going to work every day. That's what work should feel like. And it, and sure it's hard and sure there's, you know, long nights of trying to memorize your lines, but like the fact that we get to have an amazing time and dance behind the scenes and laugh with each other and get serious when we need to be serious. Like that's how every opportunity after this should be like. And so I just think um, just really grateful that we've all been sort of able to experience this so early on. So we know what to look for and we know how to approach, um, you know, our futures. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> you have a dream role. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I did it. I actually didn't realize I sort of um, am doing a little bit of a bell cosplay right now. Like <laughs> I didn't even think about it until I saw myself. So bringing back a bell moment. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Love. <laughs> I'll get <laughs> Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> um, I think as an actor right now, and maybe this is also just a product of uh, my age and the time in my life, but I am really searching for things that make me uh, go deeper into myself and, and that make that show me different sides of myself that I didn't necessarily know uh, existed. And I think one of the amazing things about this show is like, I'm the person uh, of this group that, you know, three years ago was was not like comfortable in my queerness and was not comfortable being public about it. And like over the past three years, I think being around these people, I've been able to come into that a little bit more and, and really start to explore that. And uh, and that's not to say that every single role that I will play for the rest of forever has to be queer. Um, 
but that is saying that like at that time in my life this role and this group of people uh is what i needed to like take me to that next place and so i always want to be in those rooms where like the people that i'm surrounded by are encouraging me to like dig deeper and learn more about myself mm-hmm. um and i think that's what makes an amazing show as well dream Joe. role oh <laughs> dream role uh I don't know. I think in theater, it's a little different because I just like to have fun and tap dance. Um, but <laughs> but I I would love to be like a Lord Farquaad in Shark <laughs> Musical or something, something that's like super, like totally the other direction, evil, like fun, you know, uh, campy. I think that's super fun. <laughs> it's funny. Um, Joseph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as Julia and Larry were both just saying, like, I feel like on this show, Mm -hmm. I've learned so much um, just about, like, acting on camera and and being on a set um, through all these people. Um, And I think I'm just really interested to see, like, how going on new sets or new work environments, like, what those people will teach me and I, I guess just, like, what I will carry with me um, to future projects and all the like. Um, in terms of dream roles, I really want to originate something someday, and that would be really cool. <laughs> it's like kind of a cop out answer, but no, it's a good, it's a great answer. <laughs> Sailor, you have to have a dream role now. Come on, what is I, it? Okay, okay, well, okay, I do. As of like late, my biggest one has been Eurydice from Hades. Sound, which is the song that I sang for my audition. Also, just because I just like, oh my gosh, I so admire the girl who's playing her right now. Um, I don't want to get her name wrong because her last name is so hard to pronounce for me. But um, Eva, right? I just think she's phenomenal, and she like like I just look at her, and she's also one of the people that I just look at, and I'm like. Oh, that she kind of looks like me like oh my gosh that's so cool to see he's also i believe um asian um i I don't know exactly what but um she's also asian and like one of the few that i feel like i can remember seeing um but easily that is like my biggest like oh i want to do that right now plus the music is just like phenomenal um and it's just like really magic to see i love it after sailor's yeah. audition for high school musical were you saying all i've ever known all i've ever known yeah so pretty, and i only heard it once and then after your audition i listened to it in my car like straight for like a month <laughs> that song was such an earworm for me <sighs> it's so uh. good yeah, I love that song. Well, now I have to flip the question to Tim and Alana. We can't have just actors. What are your guys' dream roles if you were <laughs> y'all just acting? <laughs> I'm in my dream role. This is my dream role. <laughs> show running high school music. I don't have any dream roles. You don't want to see me on screen. <laughs> see my DMs. Alana? I mean, I, yeah, like all I ever wanted to do was write for TV. And so I'm I'm pretty much I'm pretty much here. Um, but I use I used to live, I used to live right outside of New York City. And um, when I was younger, I used to say all I wanted to do was to play Belle in Beauty and the Beast because that was the first Broadway show I ever saw. Um, and my parents were like, you, they were very low key, like, you have a really bad voice, but we're just going to let this play out. <laughs> um, oh, and my funny. grandmother very much remembers saying, like, she saw me in a musical where I had like a pretty big role and she was like, Alana, you're a fantastic actress. Maybe just keep it to that. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah. A uh, perfect way to end a keynote on the queer experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, Tim, I just heard the good news. I think it's safe to announce that the series also got picked up for a fourth season. So (laughs) what are you looking forward to the most in uh, continuing this journey, this story with these characters and just to wrap things up on a good note? (laughs) I mean, I just feel so incredibly lucky that Disney keeps giving us the opportunity to tell these stories. And I think for us, it's always about sort of up the stakes on bigger music and better songs and, and, and more inclusive storytelling. And, um, and I think that, as I mentioned earlier, with shows like Heartstopper, uh, uh, so capturing the world's attention, it just gives us even more confidence to keep uh, 
uh, keep portraying these characters in surprising, but I think ultimately beautiful and hopeful ways. So, so I, we just feel super lucky and excited. <laughs> well, again, thank you all of you guys so much again for doing this and for being here Thanks, and for Bobby. all of your amazing work on the show. So I also want to thank uh, Disney Plus and Disney branded television for having us. And yeah, I'm sure fans will be looking forward to season three, which premieres uh, July 27th on Disney Plus and season four as well. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Thank you. And happy thank Pride you. Month. Happy Pride.